One of the first questions that people ask is how to go about structuring a drawing. Uh, we've made it fairly easy by using the uh, by creating some templates. So go to the file menu, new. And you'll see there's some uh, spotlight templates there. One for theatre, one for events. I'm just in the event one now, uh, and you can see here in the navigation palette. And if the navigation palette isn't visible, you can always get to your palettes back from the window menu. Um, there are uh, several layers here. Uh, layers are really like the electronic sheets of tracing paper. Uh, the visibility columns are here. You can make them objects on those layers, or those entire layers visible or invisible, and it's also controlled by these layer options, active only. Uh, you'll be able to snap across others, but they will be grayed or show snap others. And these can either all be independent in different scales, or they could all be linked together uh, by uh, going here and going unified view, which means they all rotate accordingly. Let's just quickly draw something here on the uh, venue layer. Uh, and let's just draw the outline of, say, a ballroom. Uh, and let's say it's uh, 14 meters by 10 meters here. And I'm just going to run these very simple commands from the event planning suite. Uh, I could, of course, use the uh, building shell tools and just use the wall tools, etc. This command will actually just do it for me. Uh, it won't insert doors, you have to put those in separately. So let's go create room uh, and let's say. You had to have an object selected, such as a polyline or rectangle or circle, or whatever. Uh, let's say our height is six meters. Uh, the wall thickness, uh, let's say two seventy. It's full color, uh, something like that. Uh, and maybe I have render works here, so I'll just very quickly put in um, something like that. Likewise for the floor, let's have a nice carpet, uh, and I won't have a fill for that. And let's just click OK. And the command will now create uh, the four walls and the floor. I can see that by going to a right isometric now. I see that in 3D. So let's go back to top plan. And now let's put in the stage. So by clicking here in the uh, layers, and because I've got the other objects grayed out, even if they're made fully visible here, or grayed, uh, I can still snap to them, so even though I'm now on the stage layer, I can um, still snap to those objects. And I'm just going to draw a stage in here, uh, something like that. Uh, let's say this is 8 meters wide by 3 meters deep. Uh, let's just center this up now to the back wall. So I'll pick it up from the center there to the midpoint. And let's say we want to have a bit of breathing space behind there so it's not right up against the back wall. Probably the easiest way to do this is to go modify and move. And uh, let's move it down in the Y, which is a, the vertical. Let's say move it by 600, so minus 600 in the Y direction. And the X is the horizontal. Now with this uh, stage, let's just draw another quick stage here. Uh, say it's a catwalk. and. Uh, width, that's a lucky guest, uh, and let's say it's a 3 meter extension. Now I'm just going to marry these up, so by picking it up from the center like this, I can just move it until I snap to the bottom center of the other object. Now holding the shift key down, I can select both, and I've got two rectangles selected here, and I can right click, and now add these together. If they were overlapping, I could take a bite out of one of them, but uh, uh, let's add them together. So I've now got this polygon, which tells me uh, it's perimeter area, that type of thing. And let's just now run this other command from the event planning suite called the create stage. Similar as before, let's say it's 900 high. And let's say it's got a bit of a carpet, a side texture, again, because we've got render works installed here. Um, let's have some black completed drapes, click OK. And now if I look at this with a flyover tool, I can rotate around. Note, however, how the um, room, the walls don't move. That's because I don't have unified view on. To have unified view on, I just go to the view menu, unified view, and now everything uh, will be linked together. And there's a little icon next to the teapot up here, which turns the unified view on or off. So let's go back to top plan for a second. And I'll just turn unified view on. 
bit of a lag here because of the recording. Um, and uh, we could put in some treads. So again, I go event planning, create stair. Uh, let's say its width is 1200. Again, it's full color. I'll just have this that, same as the carpet perhaps. Click OK. Uh, and I'll just place some treads here. Click once to place it. And the second click uh, is to is to um, rotate. Uh, I'm just going to duplicate this, edit and duplicate. Place this here. Let's now right click and uh, rotate left 90 degrees, which is uh, Command L or Control L on a Windows machine. Pick it up from the center and snap it to there. Now let's just mirror and duplicate this using the mirror and duplicate tool. So select that, the options up here, mirror tool, standard mode, or here, duplicate. So I want to mirror and duplicate. I just have to find the central point and just draw a vertical line like that with the tool and it will mirror it about that point. So now we have a stage with some access treads. With these treads, I can hold the shift key down, uh, select them all. So I can go here to the object info palette, change the style perhaps, um, maybe draw the top top tread, that type of thing. Uh, and let's go back to top plan now. And let's add some rigging. So let's make the rigging layer the active layer. Let's go to the spotlight. Uh, and I'll just put a, a piece of truss in across the back. Uh, I can hit the tab key as I'm drawing and say this piece of truss, let's make it 10 meters. Uh, click. And now I can say let's make it try point up um, 300. So I'm just presetting now with this tool for the rest of this session. Uh, chord profiles round. And ladder bar spacing, maybe let's make that every meter. Click OK. What I'm going to do now is to, and you see there's a bit of red at the end there, that means that the connection interval, these plates, so I could put spigots in, etc. Um, I'll just put none in for the moment. And if I've made that every two meters, that would divide into ten, so there wouldn't be that red overhang. Uh, if it doesn't um, multiply or divide properly, then you get the red bit if you have this con a connection. Uh, such as a plate or spigot. So with this I'm just going to duplicate that. So uh, right click and um, copy it. Now I can just right click and paste and put that somewhere like this. It's not a ideal um, rig this of course but it's just for the purposes of this demonstration. So now let's go and convert these to lighting position objects. So this is a, a hybrid object that's so 2D and 3D and it's got a Z value because it, it does have a 3D component. So with the uh, in top plan, you can only do this in top plan, if I go to the spotlight menu, object conversion, convert to light position. Uh, let's just give this a name and likewise for the downstage, object conversion Convert to light position, downstage truss. Now it is at this point that you give those lighting positions a height. So let's have a look at this in a right hand view. Currently they're on the floor, which is great. And uh, let's put these up at five and a half meters or so. Um, that is when you do it. You don't put the trusses up or all those uh, objects up and then convert them to lighting position because. Um, otherwise the lights won't take the correct height. Now what I'm going to do is I need to center these up but uh, I think it's pretty okay at the moment actually. Um, let's put some audio visual things in, some screens and that type of stuff. So let's go and uh, put in the video screen and uh, clicking on the video screen tool let's put one say dead center, double click, uh, click OK now, this is on the wrong layer because I should have been really on the uh, screens, AV and audio layer. Now I can transfer this, I could either cut this from the page, from the layer, make the other layer the active layer and then paste in place so it goes back in exactly the same spot. Or really, just to transfer things between layers, I could just go here. Uh, inadvertently having drawn on the rigging layer, I can, with that video screen selected, I can just transfer it here onto the screens, AV and audio layer. 
and now if I make that layer active I'll now be on that layer and let's go to a say front view so let's lift this up uh, just doing it manually of course and uh, you can see here uh, all the different options screen aspect ratios uh, you'll see if it is a 4x3 you've got some uh, standard screen sizes already put in if you want to go 16x9 again these are already plugged in for you uh, if you want to go custom dimensions and you've got all the different combinations here you can have round screens and different aspect ratios etc uh, all the diff all this type of thing so let's go 16x9 and let's say we want it to be two and a half high uh, now with this I'm not going to do a whole load of things on the uh, about the video screen tool in particular uh, although I will show some things which are probably quite important so let's go back to top plan and let's say that is our position currently but we don't know really uh, we need to place the projector onto that truss now you can do it two ways either by a lens so if we say we've got uh, a lens you can click here place based on lens or distance so if we go uh, lens these are all the different uh, zoom lenses and we could say well we've got one of those uh, and therefore that's not going to work so let's go a bit guesswork here uh, and uh, put that I can change the zoom factor here let's make that we'll say 1.8 uh, return uh, that's pretty close or if I'm just going to undo this a few steps to get back to where we were every time you do an undo you can see what the undo is at the bottom right of the drawing window so that's where the default uh, placement of the projector was let's go on distance now let's click on the tape measure tool and click say from there to around about there so that's about uh, 8.3 meters so if I put in let's say uh, 8400 hit return uh, let's go a bit less than that I can go now minus 200 uh, maybe even less than that okay so that's about right and it's actually telling me oh, there we go lens is at 1.8 so that's particularly useful and quite accurate from my understanding uh, now let's go to a right hand view and let's put this uh, projector up on the truss so the vertical position could be aligned to the top or it could be actually on a stand if it's on a stand you've got all these various scaffolds all plugged in uh, which are all quite quite interesting uh, but let's say it's going to be rigged and the uh, trim at the bottom trim of that is going to be say five meters and that uh, is just about right uh, for that now if we go back to top plan this is where we're going to look at classes now a lot of these objects these plug-in objects uh, speaker array speakers uh, and the curtain tool lights and that type of stuff are also controlled various aspects of them are controlled by classes and the classes can be seen from this button here uh, there are always two classes in a virtualworks document a none class and dimension class by default dimensions go into the dimension class and you can see this in the document preferences of the drawing dimensions and uh, create dimensions in dimension class you don't really have to worry about that there's some ones here called label that's for the lighting devices to display the label legend accordingly over the each instrument and now there's something which I'll probably look at in a, uh, a more detailed uh, movie about uh, actual lighting design and and vector work spotlight but uh, this notion of classes is really what we're on about so uh, having a look at this here uh, and scrolling down let's look at uh, if I go class projection parts if I check that you'll see now that there are some classes uh, vs as, su as the uh, suffix a uh, prefix sorry uh, and then I've got these frames projection canes etc and that means that, uh, let's have a look at this in an isometric view, that holding the space bar down to pan down, uh, I can control whether or not the frames are visible, and of course the frame size is all controlled in the object info palette, whether the projection, co projection cone is visible, the projector itself, whether that's visible, or the screen itself, which you probably won't see unless I turn off the frame. Because you might just be projecting onto a part of the set and don't actually want a, a screen there. 
So that's uh, one use of classes, uh, and a lot of these plugin objects are pre-classed, although in this instance you actually have to uh, turn the button on saying class projection parts, but it does allow you that control of, of aspects of the objects. Now let's look at the text options in this uh, video screen object. Uh, we can go image dimensions, uh, let's change the text size maybe to 10, um, aspect ratio, uh, lens, Likewise, distance, I'll just change it to take on the default uh, settings here. If I click OK, first thing you'll notice is in fact that another class has been added here in the same umbrella family of the uh, video screen tool. So I can just toggle those on or off. Also note here, if I zoom in with the zoom in tool, there's a little blue handle which you can see more clearly if I actually turn them off. That blue handle uh, allows me to just move that text wherever I want uh, and it's actually now part of still part of the video screen object so I can put the lens information maybe behind that uh, lens to screen uh, wherever I want it to, to go uh, and again I can control that information when I want it visible or not so uh, looking back at this if I turn off the, if I go to another uh, layer here, like the staging layer, and let's make them all visible, fully visible, I can turn off those objects. So anything on that screen's AV or audio layer is now invisible or visible, or indeed just aspects of that object. So maybe the projection cones uh, can be off or on. One thing we might do now is to put a lectern on the stage. Uh, by doing so, we will actually have a look at a few things to do with the smart cursor. So let's use the create lectern command. Uh, you see there's one there for the create screen that just basically takes you to the tool. Um, and uh, we can. this is what's known as default content. There are some in the libraries folders, under, uh, library folder under defaults. Uh, there are some folders called lecterns and uh, you can add symbols to that and they'll be available to you there. Now, the lectern is ghosting where my cursor is, but I actually want to uh, plonk this lectern dead center of the stage. Now, this is to do with the snapping palette here. We'll just have a very quick look at this. Very important to use your snaps. Now, these are the basic, the, the four main snaps you should have on uh, snaps for objects, which means uh, when you place your mouse over an object, it will tell you when you're at the midpoint or corners or ends of objects. It's pretty essential that one. Snap to angle when you're drawing a line or whatever will tell you when you're horizontal or at a particular angle, uh, uh, horizontal or vertical or it's 30 or 45 degrees. Snap to intersection if you're over two points. And this one here, smart points. That's what I'm going to show you now. Um, basically, if I leave my mouse over a snap point for uh, half a second, the red box is drawn. That means it acquires a snap point. Now I've acquired that snap point. That's quite good. But what I want to do is to get the midpoint between this point here, that point there. It will give, give me the midpoint, and then I can move my mouse. Oh, I've lost it now. Move my mouse back here, and where they intersect, that is exactly lined up. So I can double click. I've now placed that lectern on that stage on the staging layer. And I can see that in a 3D view. If I go to a right-hand view, uh, it's known. Uh, it's on the stage, so it's gone to the correct height. I can, of course, I can always just change that here in the Z value for the lectern, or just move it up and down manually with the mouse. So, of course, we need to put in the audience. Let's make the audience layer the active layer. I might turn the rigging layer, make that invisible, uh, and we're going to use another command in the event planning suite. And basically, what it's going to do is to fill up any object that we draw, polygon, rectangle, circle, that type of thing, with either chairs or tables and chairs. So with the, in this case, that rectangle selected, and I'm only going to do one, because I'm just going to mirror and duplicate the other side once I've created this first, is go create event seating. Uh, and in here, you've got a list of options, including some various symbols. This is part of your default content I mentioned before, which is in your libraries folder defaults. Uh, there's a folder in there called seating, I think. And uh, I'm just going to click OK for the moment. Uh, first of all, you see here, yeah, worksheet is created. Uh, telling you the quantity in particular. I'm just going to close that. And secondly, you'll see uh, that rectangle has now disappeared and you've now got a seating layout. Uh, and you'll notice they're all facing the lectern. Uh, 
uh, which is quite a cute little feature. Uh, but you might not actually want that to happen. Uh, you might want to be looking, pointing straight ahead. Now this little blue handle here actually changes the focus point of where those seats uh, move to. And if you click on here, go draw boundary line, it'll actually give you a snap point here so you can get them exactly uh, at 90 degrees. If I just uh, turn that boundary line off, you might also want to change the seat spacing. Of course, this is all dynamic, something like that. And in this case, I might actually want to turn the boundary line back on, double click it to edit, get the 2D reshape tool. And I can actually just increase the size of this to maybe get a few more a few more chairs in that block. Let's turn that off. Uh, what you can also do here is uh, make them concentric or that type of thing. You can also have a, a seating section name, which is uh, this field in here. Seating count and the seat number. So if I go back to my selection tool, I get this blue handle here and I can just move that text just so it's out of the way there. I'll just turn those off for the moment. Uh, and let's just mirror and duplicate those. Again from the center snap point. And uh, let's take a look at this from inside the room. If you have RenderWorks, you'll have the, in the visualization tool set, the RenderWorks camera. If you don't, you can use the uh, set 3D view command. The RenderWorks camera basically just allows you just to click, say the back of the house there, have a look. And let's display the, let's change the aspect ratio to the page size, uh, display the camera view, uh, and let's just render this in OpenGL. And there you are.